On the fateful morning of June 6, 1944, as the sun rose over the shores of Normandy, France, the thunderous roar of the Allied invasion echoed across the beaches. This historic event, known as D-Day, marked the beginning of the end for Nazi tyranny in Europe, signaling the dawn of a new era as World War II approached its conclusion. In July 1944, Soviet forces uncovered Majdanek, the first major Nazi death camp found in German-occupied Poland, revealing the extent of Nazi atrocities. In the heart of this dark saga loomed Ilse Koch, the Nazi regime's ghastly specter, born Margareta Ilza Kohler on September 22, 1906 in Dresden, embodying terror itself. Known as the Beast of Buchenwald, her name echoed as a chilling emblem of cruelty, rising from humble origins to mastermind unspeakable horrors in history's darkest chapters. Before her transformation into a figure of dread, Ilse was merely a shadow among us, an ordinary woman harboring the latent horror she would unleash, camouflaged in the mundane. In 1932, as Hitler's shadow loomed large, Ilse took a sinister turn, sealing her fate in the annals of infamy and veering into the abyss where dark legends are forged. In a chilling moment of dark foresight, she clasped the shadows, swearing loyalty to the Nazi party, a choice that would carve her name into the chronicles of terror. From a simple secretary to a harbinger of fear in Nazi Germany, the tale is one of dark descent, where ambition plunges into the abyss. Her metamorphosis into the Beast of Buchenwald ominously began to unfold. From a foreman's daughter to a secretary, she spiraled into a shadow of terror within Nazi Germany. Ilskoch set foot on a spine-tingling path. The future Beast of Buchenwald was taking her first steps into a chilling descent. Within Nazi Germany's clutches, a secretary's journey into terror began. It was 1936, under foreboding skies, that Ilse Koch edged towards her infamous role as the Beast of Buchenwald. Beneath the Third Reich's dark shadow, the icy Liebensborn program unfurled, a sinister scheme to swell the Aryan ranks. SS officers were urged to sire at least four offspring, wedlock aside, as clandestine havens for unwed mothers and their young sprang up nurturing yet binding their destinies to a grim quest for racial purity. As shadows deepened, Ilse Koch bound her fate to Karl Otto Koch in 1936, a marriage steering her into unfathomable darkness. As the overseer of Sachsenhausen, a notorious node in the Nazi camp network near Berlin, Karl Otto turned it into a prison for political foes and regime-defined outlaws, marking a pivotal chapter in Ilse's sinister transformation. Ilse's shadow loomed over Sachsenhausen, embodying both secretary and sentinel, her very presence a cold testament to her burgeoning power. With her husband founding Buchenwald in 1937, their infamy spread, his for avarice, hers for a brutality so chilling it curdled the blood. Buchenwald's shadow cast a pall over 33 barracks, a realm of mute despair and smothered screams, hosting a punishment block, a brothel, disinfection facilities, and a crematorium, a grim cage for political captives. With the Cox's rising power came an expanding shadow over their names, unaware that their darkest days of dread were just dawning. 1937 marked the grim curtain rise for the ascent of the Beast of Buchenwald. Buchenwald, a name that chills to the bone, rose ominously on a hill near Weimar, Germany, a stark monument to fear. This macabre fortress, built to sow dread and submission, was no mere jail, it was a factory of death. Buchenwald's sinister grasp expanded, ensnaring a diverse tapestry of victims, political foes, Jews, repeat offenders, Jehovah's Witnesses, Sinti and Roma, and German military deserters, a bleak assembly shackled by tyranny. The camp's cruel design aimed not just to confine but to strip away humanity and crush the spirits of all ensnared by its barbed embrace. Those within were not mere captives. They were prey to a monstrous system bent on erasing their very souls. The camp first housed political prisoners, valiant spirits who stood against the Nazi terror. As battles raged, Buchenwald swelled with Jews, Roma, Jehovah's Witnesses, and all deemed outcasts by the Nazis' cruel judgment. In this theater of horror, Ilse Koch, the beast of Buchenwald, found her macabre domain. As the commandant's wife, she held immense power, wielding it with a sadism that inspired fear and loathing in all who crossed her path. Ilse Koch stood not on the sidelines of Buchenwald's horrors but in their midst, notorious for her savage cruelty. Her morbid obsession with human skin, especially tattooed prisoners, 
wove a horrifying legend throughout the camp. She handpicked tattooed prisoners for death, turning their skin into gruesome relics, showcasing her utter absence of humanity. Her savagery extended far beyond this ghastly pastime. She infamously rode her horse, lashing at prisoners with her whip, finding joy in their agony and despair. She basked in her dominion over life and death, her notoriety for mercilessness echoing far beyond the camp's confines. Amidst Buchenwald's nightmare, Ilse Koch found her gruesome spotlight. She relished her role with a cold glee, leaving a lasting scar on those who endured her reign of terror. The Beast of Buchenwald had stepped out from the shadows, fully revealed. In 1941, the ominous specter of Buchenwald beckoned Josias Waldeck, the enigmatic higher SS and police leader for Weimar, casting a bone-chilling gaze upon the camp's corridors of dread, where fear reigned supreme. In a chilling twist of destiny, Waldeck's gaze fell upon a haunting entry in Buchenwald's death ledger. Walter Kramer, the once heroic head orderly, now condemned to the shadows of death within the very realm Waldeck ruled with an iron fist. Gazing into the abyss, Waldeck unraveled a bone-chilling scheme. Carl Otto Koch had condemned Kramer and Karl Pikes, branding them political prisoners to shroud a dark secret. Their offense, tending to Koch's clandestine ailment, a truth he'd do anything to bury in the depths of fear. Under Waldeck's iron gaze, the camp trembled as truth tore through deceit's fragile veil. The supposed escape was but a cruel illusion, a prisoner dispatched for water, betrayed by a bullet's merciless kiss from behind. His offense, the audacity to confront Koch's secretive torment, sealing his doom with a whisper of fear. In the depths of darkness, SS man Kohler met his demise, courtesy of Waldemar Hoven, whose healing touch turned to horrors. Once a healer, now a harbinger of fear, Hoven's twisted experiments with typhus and deadly potions sent shivers through the shadows of despair. In a chilling display of allegiance, Hoven, consumed by his devotion to Ilse, silenced Kohler with a lethal dose of phenol, erasing a witness to the sinister truths veiled within Koch's inquiry. Love twisted to terror as shadows whispered of secrets best left buried. As the investigation delved deeper, a haunting tapestry of Karl Koch's deadly decrees emerged, woven with stolen shadows from those already bereft of life's light. In the darkness, fear whispered tales of theft beyond the grave. Amidst the abyss of despair, plunder birthed opulence, a sinister symbol of greed and malice, an indoor riding arena erected for him and Ilse, built upon a foundation of over 250,000 Reichsmarks soaked in the blood of the innocent. In the shadows, fear whispered of the cost paid in suffering. The investigation into the Cokes revealed Carl's orders for prisoner executions and embezzlement, funding extravagant purchases like a riding arena and luxury cars, supported by Swiss accounts filled with extorted prisoner funds. Ilse was implicated in stealing over 700,000 Reichsmarks, while Carl faced charges for financial crimes and unauthorized killings. As the curtain fell on World War II, the chilling chapter of Ilse Koch's terror reached its climax. The haunting legacy of the Holocaust was nearing its end, and the once untouchable Beast of Buchenwald found herself backed into a corner, her reign of fear coming to a close. The thunderous arrival of the United States Army in April 1945 shattered the silence of Buchenwald, spelling the demise of Ilse's reign of terror and heralding the dawn of her judgment day. Caught in the grip of fear's embrace, Ilse was swiftly apprehended by American forces in the aftermath's chilling aftermath. Amidst the echoes of fear, the Grand Theater of Justice unveiled itself as Ilse faced trial in the heart of Dachau, Germany, in 1947. Amidst the shadows of accusation, Ilse stood tall in the dock, facing a barrage of charges from murder to illicit riches. With the world's gaze upon her, fear whispered of the reckoning awaiting her. Her defense, a chilling echo of her crimes, veiled in claims of innocence amidst the damning evidence. In the courtroom's hush, fear whispered of the darkness cloaking her truth. The court remained unmoved, its verdict a thunderous echo of fear's relentless pursuit of justice. Ilse's fate was sealed as the gavel fell, her guilt etched in the annals of history, a chilling testament to the horrors of war's lawless descent. The sentence, life imprisonment. Within a year, fate twisted its chilling hand, unveiling an unexpected turn that sent shivers down spines. General Lucius D. Clay, 
with a stroke of his pen, cast a shadow of fear as he wielded his power, altering fate with a reduced sentence. General Lucius D. Clay, the U.S. military governor of Germany, reduced Ilskok's sentence to four years, citing a lack of evidence. The world held its breath in horror as the Beast of Buchenwald walked free in 1949, sending shivers down the spine of humanity. Yet fate's grip tightened on Ilskok, a chilling reminder that the horrors of the past can never truly be escaped. In a chilling twist of fate, German authorities seized Ilskok once more in 1951, this time on charges of murder and incitement to murder during her dark reign at Buchenwald. This time, the chilling trial unfolded in Augsburg, Germany, casting a shadow of fear over the courtroom's solemn halls. The verdict, swift and unforgiving, echoed through the chambers with an icy grip, sending tremors of fear through those who dared to listen. Once more the gavel fell, sealing her fate in the icy embrace of life imprisonment, a chilling echo of justice's relentless pursuit. Ilse's last days were cloaked in shadows, spent within the confines of her prison cell, where fear lingered as her only companion. In a final act of darkness, the tormentor turned tormented, as the specter of fear claimed its ultimate victory in 1967, when she who once wielded terror chose to embrace its icy embrace. The terror's grip finally shattered as the beast of Buchenwald met her end, leaving behind a haunting legacy of fear. The chilling reign of Ilse Koch, the notorious beast of Buchenwald, reached its spine-chilling conclusion as her chapter in darkness came to a close. Her legacy, a haunting echo of terror, stands as a stark reminder of humanity's darkest depths, sending shivers down the spine of history.